Hi everyone, and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok. And today we're doing our Raglan comparison video. I'm so excited to be bringing you this video today. It's been a long, long time coming. Let me explain to you kind of where this all started, when the first time I talked about this was, and how we got to where we are today. So back in September, before I put out my fall and winter knitting plans video, I was in a real, like, I don't know if I would say like slump, but like, I was really looking at like my yarn stash and I was getting kind of just like down on myself. I was like, I have all this yarn and I'm not using it. So I put together a plan and I was like, I picked out six sweater quantities from my stash behind me. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna make six patterns from these six sweater quantities in my stash. And when I kind of looked at all looked at all of it, I was like, okay, I have three drop shoulder sweaters here that I wanna make, and I have three raglan sweaters that I wanna make. And so I thought it would be really fun to like compare the two groups. So I knit all of the drop shoulder sweaters first. Uh, I knit those in October, November, and December. You can go watch the drop shoulder comparison video. I think that came out in about January. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description box down below as well. And today we are finally at the point where we're ready to do the raglan comparison. In January, February, and March, I knit three raglan sweaters. So that's where we are here today. Before we get into the comparison, I am happy to announce that the sponsor for today's video is Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is a jewelry brand that crafts high quality jewelry pieces at very affordable prices from $39 ranging to higher end pieces. They are carbon neutral from their packaging to their products. They care about their company's sustainability and their impact on the planet. Their designs are unique and elegant, and they are all tarnishing resistant and hypoallergenic. Ana Luisa reached out to me and asked for my top picks from their website, and I've been going through a real big like gold hoop earring phase for the last like six months, which is like relatively new to me. Before that, I never wore gold hoop earrings. <laughs> so I picked out some of my favorite earrings to try out. This was also really great timing because both my wedding anniversary and my birthday are coming up in April, so it really felt like a treat yourself moment. Let me show you the four pieces that I picked out. So the first is Toda. This is a double earring made with 14 karat gold on recycled sterling silver with cubic zirconia stones. I've been really interested in these like double earrings because I only have one piercing in my ears but this makes it look like you have multiple earrings coming out of it um, and so I think they're really interesting. I also picked out Scarlet which is also a double earring. It's 14 karat gold on brass. It does not have the cubic zirconia stones so if you're looking for like something different with the bling without the bling you've got two options covered here. I picked out Alina. This is an incomplete ring. It's 14 karat gold on recycled sterling silver. I thought this was really interesting. Again, I've never worn anything like this, but I think it's super, super cute. Lastly, I picked out Celeste. These are really beautiful moon and star dangly earrings made with 14 karat gold on brass and cubic zirconia stones. These are the ones that I'm actually wearing right now to film the whole episode. I thought they were perfect to go with my Lento sweater that I'm currently wearing because I knit this sweater in Explorer Knits and Fibers yarn. The colorway is To the Stars Who Listen, which was from the A Court of Thorns and Roses or Akatar collection. If you've read that series, then you will like fully understand like 
the stars to the stars who listen, star and moon, just perfect. I love these. Many pieces come in both gold and silver so you can shop your personal preference. They don't only have earrings, they also have necklaces, bracelets, and rings. I'm talking to you about this today because Ana Luisa is currently having their spring sale until April 18th and it is a buy one get one 40% off sale. You can click the link in the description box down below to shop the sale. If you miss the sale, they also offered me a coupon code that you can use at any time for 20% off your purchase and that code is KNITCALIFORNIA20. Again, click the link in the description box below and happy shopping! I hope you can find something for you or maybe a gift for someone else. Okay, let's talk about the three sweaters that I ended up knitting. So, the first sweater that I knit in January was the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Made Designs, and I knit this in a DK weight yarn held with a mohair. The yarn was Explore Knits and Fibers Court of Dreams held with Lang Lace Mohair in the colorway Storm Blue. The second sweater I knit is the one that I'm wearing. This is the Lento by Jonah Hightala. This was published in Lina Magazine. And the yarn that I used for it, like I mentioned before, is also exploring knits and fibers in the colorway to the stars who listen. This was knit in a fingering weight yarn plus Surrey alpaca yarn held together. Um, they were both the same colorway. The third sweater that I knit is the Semper Sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. I knit this in a strand of fingering weight held with a strand of mohair. The fingering weight was Ken Yarn in his Aurora fingering base in the colorway Raspberry Sunday. And the mohair that I held with it is Lang Lace Mohair in the colorway Raspberry. If you see me looking down at all, it's because I have my notes here, so just FYI. I'm trying to stay focused, but bloop bloop bloop. So I do have to note, the Lento was not originally on my plan to knit. I had, an, I had originally chosen the No Frills sweater by Petite Knit to be the last raglan sweater that I made. However, after I knit the Cozy Classic Raglan in Court of Dreams, I was just like obsessed with these yarns in my stash and I was like I need to get these on my needles like right now. This was also around the time that there was a Lento knit along going on and so I've seen a lot of people talking about knitting this sweater and one of the main like attributes of it that's really appealing to a lot of people is that you can knit this with a lot less yarn than some of the other raglan sweaters. So I knew with the three skeins of fingering and the three skeins of Surrey alpaca that I had that I would most likely be able to have enough to knit this sweater. And um, I'll just say it, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad that I swapped this sweater out for the no frills. We can talk about the no frills a little bit later. Um, I did purchase the no frills pattern and I'm going to be including it in the comparison piece, at least the like specs part. I didn't knit it so I can't talk about like the knitting um, aspect of it, uh, but just so you can get an idea of like the sizing and the techniques and stuff like that. So, okay. How do the patterns differ? Let's get into a little bit of the nitty gritty. So, let's talk first about the sizes that are offered. Um, and here I will be talking about all four patterns. So, the Cozy Classic Raglan comes in sizes extra small through 5XL. This is a 34 inch to a 66 inch finished bust measurement. That's 86.5 centimeters to 167.5 centimeters. And this design recommends four to six inches or 10 to 15 centimeters of positive ease. The Lento comes in sizes one through nine. That corresponds to a 38.5 to 67.25 inch finished bust. That's 96 to 168 centimeters. And this pattern recommends a five inch or 12 and a half centimeter positive ease. The Semper sweater comes in sizes A through K. That's finished bust, finished bust, wow. That's finished bust measurement of 33.5 to 59 inches or 85 to 150 centimeters. And this pattern recommends two to four inches or five to 10 centimeters of positive ease. 
Lastly, the no frill sweater comes in sizes extra small to 3XL. That's a bust measurement of 39 to 54 inches or 100 to 137 centimeters. And this pattern recommends 6 inches or 15 centimeters of positive ease. So one of the big questions that always comes up is, are these patterns size inclusive? So let's, you know, by having all of this uh, written down, you can really see the differences in the sizing between each of them. The Cozy Classic Raglan and the Lento, I would say 100% yes, are size inclusive. Um, the finished bust measurements go up to 66 and 67 inches respectively, and the smallest sizes, because I think sometimes we forget about to talk about the smallest sizes, the smallest sizes are 34 inches to 38 and a half inches. Um, the Semper sweater, I gave like a, if we're looking at this in terms, like a stoplight, like yellow, green, red, good to bad range, um, I gave the Semper sweater a yellow. It's like, it's like almost there. I don't, <laughs> I wish there had been like one more size um, because it goes up to 59 inches. Typically we want it to go to like 60 or 62 inches to be fully size inclusive. It's at 59. So, so do with that what you will. Lastly, the no frills, um, I gave a red. This is not fully size inclusive. This pattern goes up to 54 inches. It's missing, you know, a whole eight inches uh, at the top end there. So, I don't know. A lot of people talk about the size inclusivity of Petite Knit. Um, some of her patterns are fully size inclusive and some of them are not. This is probably one of the simplest patterns that she has. Classic raglan sweater. I don't know why it couldn't have been graded up to, you know, 62 inches. There's no reason. Absolutely no reason. Okay, the other piece that I really like to look at is the recommended yarn, the recommended gauge, and the recommended needle size. These three things are, have become for me like really important when looking at a pattern. Um, it gives you a sense of like how dense the fabric is going to be when you knit it up, which is really important to know depending on what climate you live in. If you're someone like me living in Southern California or a warm climate, um, maybe you don't always want like a super dense fabric. Maybe you need something a little bit lighter and airier. Uh, but maybe you live in, you know, the northern United States, Canada, Scandinavian country, where it gets colder. Um, maybe you do want that dense fabric. So definitely something to keep in mind. The Cozy Classic Raglan is recommended to be knit in one strand of fingering plus one strand of mohair. Or this one has options. You can knit it in two strands of fingering weight held together. Or you can knit it in one strand of DK weight yarn. The recommended gauge is 18 stitches and 24 rows per 4 inches uh, or 10 centimeters and the recommended needle size is 4.5 millimeters. The Lento is knit with one strand of fingering and one strand of lace weight yarn held together uh, so that could be a mohair or a surrey like I did, a surrey. Um, and the recommended gauge is 15 stitches and 21 rows per 4 inches and the recommended needle size is 6 millimeters. The Semper Sweater recommended yarn is one strand of fingering plus one strand of mohair. The recommended gauge is 21 stitches and 28 rows per 4 inches and the recommended needle size is 4.5 millimeter needles. Lastly, the No Frills sweater, the yarn recommended is one strand of fingering plus one strand of mohair. The recommended gauge is 21 stitches, 28 rows per 4 inches, and the recommended needle size is 4 millimeter needles. Okay, there's all the info. That was a big info dump. Let's take a look at what we're actually dealing with here. All of these patterns are recommending one strand of fingering weight plus one strand of mohair. That's really important to keep in mind because if you're using the same yarn for each of these patterns, like there's a commonality between all of them. But now let's look at the gauge and the needle size and we can see where some of these differences come into uh, effect. I'm actually going to look at the Semper sweater and the No Frills sweater first. This 21 stitch um, stitch gauge is very, very common for one strand of fingering and one strand of mohair. I'm thinking back to my drop shoulder comparison 
almost all of those sweaters had gauges around here so they were all 20 stitches 21 stitches 22 stitches on a four millimeter or a 4.5 millimeter needle um, so these two sweaters really fall into that category I do think it's interesting that um, the Semper sweater and the No Frill sweater are both telling you 21 stitches per 4 inches, but the Semper has you, but the Semper is recommending a 4.5 millimeter needle, and the No Frills is recommending a 4 millimeter needle. So again, same yarn composition, fingering plus mohair, same gauge, but these designers are achieving that on different needle sizes. So. I'm not going to sit here and tell you and like lecture you on swatching, but you can just kind of look at the numbers and see like this is one of those reasons why you need to swatch. I know for myself, I can't get a 21 stitch gauge on 4 millimeter needles. If I was knitting the no frill sweater, I would absolutely need to go up to at least a 4.5 millimeter, maybe even a 5 millimeter needle. And that's something that I know about myself. I know that I'm a tighter knitter, my gauge ends up way tighter than what's typically recommended in the pattern for the gauge and the needle size recommended. Okay. Now let's take a look at the Cozy Classic Raglan and the Lento, and especially I want to compare these to the Semper and the No Frills gauge. The Cozy Classic Raglan is 18 stitches per 4 inches, so we're looking at a wider gauge. It takes less stitches to fill up that 4 inch space. Um, and it's recommending a 4.5 millimeter needle, so this is similar to the Semper sweater. Um, so this is also something that you need to think about. If you're getting 21 stitches per 4 inches with 4.5 millimeter needles, like what is recommended for the Semper sweater, you're probably not going to be able to get 18 stitches per 4 inches on 4.5 millimeter needles with the same yarn for the Cozy Classic Raglan. This is one of the biggest things that... Well, this was one of the biggest issues for me when I first knit the Cozy Classic Raglan. The Cozy Classic Raglan was one of the first sweaters that I ever knit a couple of years ago. I really knew nothing about gauge. I knit a gauge swatch, but like didn't even measure it. I was just like, oh yeah, this looks great. Uh, I'm really excited to move forward with this. I had no idea what I was doing, and I was nowhere near this 18 stitch per 4 inch gauge, and my sweater came out way too small. Like it fits, but it's tight, and it's not what I wanted. It's not what I expected. I just think that 18 stitches per 4 inches on 4.5 millimeter needles, like the math doesn't really math for me there. Um, and it's one of the things that I always like point out if somebody is recommending the Cozy Classic Raglan to a beginner knitter, um, it's like critical that you need to swatch and like measure that and do that correctly. Otherwise, it's not going to end up the way you want it to. Now. Something else that we have to talk about, so when I knit my Cozy Classic Raglan in Court of Dreams, um, I actually knit this in a DK weight yarn plus a mohair. So that's what I did. I think I also went up, I should have double checked this. Actually, I think I have it later. Yeah, yeah, so I actually knit this with larger yarn, so instead of a fingering plus a mohair, I knit this with a DK plus a mohair, and I went up a needle size. The recommended needle size is 4.5 millimeter. I went up to a 5 millimeter, and with both of those two things combined, that's how I was able to reach something close to that 18 stitches per 4 inch gauge. So, this is something that just comes with like knitting a bunch of sweaters, kind of knowing a little bit more about what you're doing. Once you like have done it a few times, you start to understand like your personal knitting style, your personal knitting gauge, the types of numbers that you can get with these needle sizes recommended. And if the number is really wonky like this, how you can like change up what you're doing both in the yarn choice and the needle size in order to get the gauge for the pattern and i guess something else to talk about is why is it so important to like get the gauge in the pattern 
it's really important to get the gauge in the pattern because if you're going to be following the stitch counts in the pattern that is what determines like the circumference and the final measurement length and width of your sweater now if you're gonna knit like the same sweater, the same pattern, at a different gauge, you're going to need to do some knitting math to figure out like which sizes, which sti stitch counts do you really need to follow in order to get the measurements that you need. So, it's a lot to kind of think about. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Um, but to be honest, like I've learned so much in knitting these six sweaters and really taking the really taking the time to like write down the yarn choice, the yardage, the sizing, my gauge, um, measuring things before blocking and after blocking, uh, and really tracking all of this in like my spreadsheets and in my knitting journal, um, and then comparing all of these numbers together after knitting them all, it has just given me like so much information and so much knowledge about how I knit and like what I prefer in like my final garments so I would really recommend doing something like this um, if you're interested in learning more about like yourself and how you knit okay got a little bit off topic there on a tangent um, let's also look finally at the lento because the lento is very different from all of the other sweaters the lento recommends again fingering plus mohair with a 15 stitch per four inch gauge so that's even bigger right right I said 18 inches compared to sorry 18 stitches per four inches was way bigger gauge compared to that 21 stitches per four inches now we're going up to 15 stitches per four inches so you've got way less stitches they're way bigger to fill up that four inch space the good thing I would say is that this pattern recommends a larger needle size in order to reach that gauge so again swatch it out see what you can do but at least it's not recommending like a 4.5 millimeter needle right <laughs> um and i do think like so yarn choice is very important um for a lot of these patterns it kind of does say like you can choose to knit this in that fingering plus mohair or one strand of dk weight yarn for the lento i would really recommend having a, a fuzzy lace weight yarn um, as one of the yarns that you choose because the stitches are so wide if you use a mohair or a surrey that like fuzz is really going to fill in all the gaps and it's not going to look like a holy sweater you know with a lot of holes in it with a lot of gaps in it so that's just my two cents do whatever you want but uh, i thought i would throw that in there one of the other things that I looked at, so that was all like the sizing info for the patterns, but I really wanted to look at also the construction. So when I did this for the drop shoulders, there are like many different ways that you can knit a drop shoulder. You can knit it top down, you can knit it bottom up, the back panel shaping can be very different depending on how the designer does it. So there are a lot of differences in the way that it was knit. When we're looking at raglan sweaters, they're all like pretty much the same. Pretty much all raglan sweaters are going to be knit from the top down. You've got this like, these um, increases are at like um, regular intervals on the sides of your sweater, on the front and the back. Like the shaping is not a secret. Everyone kind of knows once you've done one raglan sweater, they're kind of all the same. So. The differences that I wanted to point out and talk about between these sweaters were more in the construction methods. What type of cast on are we using? What type of increase method are we using? Those sorts of things. And I think it's really interesting uh, because, yeah, everyone has their preferences, right? So some people like to do one type of cast on, some people don't like to do that, that same type of cast on. So this is where we get into the nitty gritty of like figuring out, okay, which pattern is going to be best for you based off the construction method. Let me talk you through the specific techniques used in each of the patterns. So first, the Cozy Classic Raglan, um, this one has you do a tubular cast on, which is the one that includes waist yarn. It has short row shaping. The raglan shaping are lifted increases, so right lifted increase and left lifted increase. 
there is optional waist shaping two different ways in this pattern there is sleeve shaping and there is a tubular bind off which that's the one that includes the setup rows compared to the Italian bind off which does not include the setup rows this pattern also includes modifications for a longer yoke depth and a couple different types of sleeves so a bubble sleeve a short sleeve um, and also a mod for less ease in the body and the sleeves. So kind of a lot going on there. Um, okay, the lento. The construction of the lento has you do a provisional cast on with waist yarn. It has a folded collar and this technique is doing like a knit two together from two separate needles. This pattern has short rows. It has uh, knit front back increases for the raglan. It has sleeve shaping and it has you just do like a regular bind off in pattern. The Semper sweater has you do the long tail cast on. It has a double folded collar also. Um, a little bit different construction compared to the Lento double folded collar. It includes short rows. This one has make one increases for the raglan shaping. So make one right and make one left. Um, this raglan is a compound raglan, which means it's not just like knit one row, increase one row, repeated all the way through, um, which means that you get different like yoke depths for each of the sizes. I think this is a really interesting point. A lot of people mentioned to me that they have had trouble in the past with like yoke depth being too long especially for larger sizes so i think this compound raglan shaping is something that really takes that into account um so that you're not left with like a really deep yoke when you don't need it um this pattern has you do a tubular bind off again this is the one that includes setup rows and it does include sleeve shaping and what i mean by sleeve shaping is like um, as you're as you knit the sleeve you're doing decreases so that the sleeve in general follows the shape of your arm where it's wider up here and smaller down at the wrist lastly the no frill sweater this has you do a long tail cast on it includes short rows it includes make one increases for the raglan increases so make one right and make one left it does include shaping and this is a regular bind off in pattern so a couple of things to like note here. Um, these are all of the construction methods recommended in the pattern. Now, if you don't like any of these methods, if you prefer to do a different method, let's talk about binding off, for example, at the end of the body or at the end of the sleeves. Maybe you don't want to do the bind off in pattern. Maybe you don't want to do the tubular bind off. If you have a bind off method that you prefer, just do it. Just don't follow what the pattern says, just do it. Where this gets a little tricky, I think sometimes is changing like the cast on method. Um, I will say I did not do the tubular cast on on the Cozy Classic Raglan. I did not do the provisional cast on on the Lento. Um, for the Cozy Classic Raglan, one of my new favorite cast ons is the one by one rib knit cable cast on it's got like a long complicated name but it's the knit cable cast on um, what i like about this is you don't have to do a long tail and you don't have to use waist yarn you don't have to do any setup rows that i think are just like a waste of time and yarn and energy and effort um and so I knew that that would be okay as a replacement for the tubular cast on and it worked out great. So I think it's important to know what the construction like techniques are for each of these patterns but it's also really important to start to learn when you can replace them with a construction method that you like better um, in case you don't want to do something that's in the pattern. So there we go. Um, another thing that I know people have really strong opinions on are the raglan increases, whether they are a make one increase or a lifted increase. For example, I don't like lifted increases, um, especially the 
the second one that you do. I always forget which one's the right and which one's the left. Um, I think they're confusing and every time I do them I mess them up and I have to redo them. Whereas make one right and make one left I have memorized and I really prefer those um, over the lifted increases. And I know people have the opposite preference as well. I know some people love the lifted increases more than the make one increases. So for raglan increases it's a little bit trickier to change that in the pattern. Um, sometimes you like need a stitch in between to do like the make one on one side, the make one on the other side, one stitch in between. For the lifted increases you don't need that stitch in between so you kind of need to figure out if you do want to change them. Um, you may need to change up some of the stitch counts just like in the pattern in general to make sure you have the right stitch counts for that raglan increase. Um, I did change when I knit the Cozy Classic. I changed so many things when I knit the Cozy Classic raglan, I'll be honest. I didn't do the tubular cast on, I didn't do the lifted increases, I did make one increases. Um, I didn't do tubular bind off, I did Italian bind off. Um, all of that. I pretty much just followed the stitch counts. The first time I knit the pattern, I did all of these things, and that's when I realized I hated them. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Those are like the specific techniques used in the pattern. Now, something else that we need to talk about kind of goes into like the clarity of the pattern. Um, the Cozy Classic Raglan and the Semper Sweater, um, I really would say are like your most beginner friendly patterns in terms of the amount of information that's included in the pattern. The amount of descriptions of each of these techniques, especially if you're new, um, it's kind of important to like have detailed explanations of these. Now, I can also say this is a preference thing, um, especially if you're not good with written instructions, maybe you're more of a visual person like I am, having all of these instructions written down on a piece of paper, just like large blocks of text, I can understand can be confusing and like get frustrating. So something to keep in mind if that's you, if you don't like large blocks of text explaining different things, look you can't always just skip over it. You can read through the pattern first, you know, highlight all the sections that you really need to like follow to actually like knit the pattern and just like ignore all of the other pieces. But I do think it's important to note what's actually included in these patterns. So I'm going to talk about the Cozy Classic Raglan first, then we'll go to the Semper Sweater, and then I'll talk to you also about the Lento and the No Frills. So the Cozy Classic Raglan is a 12-page pattern, and it has special explanations of the following things. This is a long list, so be prepared. Okay. Choosing a size, and it also includes a detailed schematic with photos and sizing tables. Suggested yarns, plus a linked spreadsheet with budget yarn options. How much additional yarn you will need if you want to add length to the body. This I think is really cool. I have never seen this in another pattern. Typically designers just say, hey, you might need more yarn if you want to add length to the pattern, which with the trend in like all the cropped sweaters right now is not super helpful, but um, this is pretty cool. A description of all needle and cord sizes needed, and it talks to you about like why you need different cord sizes, cable lengths. Um, mohair and fingering yarn color combinations. It includes instructions for how to fade yarns if you want to, you know, fade from one color to another. It explains in detail the one by one tubular bind off in the round. It explains the one by one tubular cast on and an alternative cast on. It explains German short rows, the lifted increases, what to do if you're worried about running out of yarn when you get to the sleeves. So assuming you're going to knit the whole body first and then you get to the sleeves and you're like, I don't know if I have enough yarn to knit both of the sleeves. It talks you through what to do in that case and a longer yoke depth modification and sleeve modification. So I think this is really cool because this is both a mixture of like 
explanations on specific knitting techniques that you can use for this pattern, but then you'll know about them for future patterns. But it also talks you through like sizing and yarn choice and like fading and that's also like really valuable information that you can use on other projects in the future. Now let's talk through the Semper sweater. This is a 20 page pattern and it includes information on yarn alternatives, how to knit in the round, um, and all of these techniques come with links to videos. So if you are more of a visual learner, um, this would be great for you because you can just click the link and watch the video instead of reading that section in the pattern. So knitting in the round, how to do a double folded collar, how to do German short rows, how to do the make one increases as well as leaning decreases. So like the knit two together and the slip slip knit, Casting on in the middle of the row uh, with a video link and the tubular bind off. Now, I know that sounds like not as much as like the Cozy Classic Raglan. However, when you buy the Semper sweater, you are also purchasing an additional 28 page yarn guide. This kind of like blew my mind. Like, I knew Sophie was putting this together, but when I read this, I was like, oh my gosh, like. This is great. And in this yarn guide, it talks you through all different yarn types. So materials, weight, and construction of like all different yarn types. It talks you through gauge and tension. So swatching and also blocking. And it talks about substituting yarn. So if you want to substitute yarn fiber, for example, like a Surrey versus a mohair or yarn weight, so like a fingering versus a DK weight, and how that really impacts the final objects that you're going to make. This is gold. Like, this is something that like every knitter should know about. This is like a basic of understanding for like coming in to knit sweaters. So, yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. I don't know what else to say. Like, that's a lot of information. Um, the two have some overlap in the information that you're getting in them and also, like, some differences. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you you need to buy both of these patterns in order to get all of that information. There are other, like, you know, YouTube videos and, um, like, other options where you can get this information from. But if you're buying a pattern knowing that you're also getting this info in it that you can use for other patterns is really nice to know. Okay, when we talk about the clarity of the pattern for the Lento, this pattern was originally published in Lina Magazine, and since it was published in a magazine, spacing for pattern instructions was limited. So this is only a six-page pattern, um, and there's really no extra explanations on technique, and there's no links to outside videos. This is really a pattern that you're going to want to knit after you've knit at least one other sweater before um, and you should really understand general raglan construction before knitting this sweater. Um, I will say I have heard that there are like stitch count issues and potentially errors in the pattern. I didn't notice this at all because this was you know this was I've knit a bunch of sweaters before this so when I started this pattern looked at the stitch count for how much I needed to cast on, and I just went. I looked at how many rounds I needed to complete for my raglan increases. I hit that and I was like, great, does it fit? Yeah, let's go, split for sleeves. I didn't look at the stitch counts, I didn't need to. Um, I had enough information and knowledge on how to knit this sweater, how to know if it was gonna fit, that I just continued on and it was fine. So. Um, if you don't need all of those additional explanations and you're interested in knitting this, you should have no problem. And lastly, the No Frills sweater. This is a six page pattern, uh, again, pretty normal. Um, with It does have details on the make one right, make one left raglan increases and German short rows, but that's it. Nothing, nothing near what you're going to get from the Cozy Classic Raglan and the Semper sweater. So, whew, 
that was a lot okay so that's all of the like general info about the patterns now let's talk about the actual knitting experience and the versions that I made so what I really want to talk to you first about are the pattern measurements versus what I actually ended up with and Yes, this is going to be different for every person because the gauge, the needle size, all of that we, that we talked about before is going to come into play here. Um, but let's talk through this. And in this section, I can only talk about the Cozy Classic Raglan, the Lento, and the Semper Sweater because I did not actually knit the no frills. Let's start with the Cozy Classic Raglan. So I chose to knit the size extra large, which is a 50 inch bust. The yarn estimates in the pattern, it says, uh, it recommends um, 1354 yards of fingering weight plus 1295 yards of mohair. I purchased six skeins of DK and four skeins of mohair, so 10 total. The recommended gauge for this was 18 stitches on 4.5 millimeter needles. I got 19 stitches on 5 millimeter needles. I ended up using 5 millimeter needles for the body and 3.75 millimeters for the ribbing. So, uh, looking at the final measurements for the pattern, um, the recommended ease, like the the recommended final sizing is 50 inches, so that's 10 inches of positive ease. My finished garment ended up with 46 inches for 6 inches of positive ease. This is something that I knew was going to happen. Uh, my sweaters typically end up smaller than what they say they're going to end up as because of my gauge and my tension and the tightness of my knitting. So I did like compensate for that. So. Um, the time it took me to knit. This took me 23 days to knit, which is a little bit over three weeks. Um, and the cost. This, ha this pattern has a set price of $12 uh, USD. However, Jessie Mae does have pricing options. So on the Ravelry listing, it says, if you aren't able to purchase my patterns at full price, my choose what you pay pricing model is also available exclusively to subscribers. Immediately upon sign up, you will receive a welcome email and access to 25% and 50% discount codes to assist with financial accessibility. So once you subscribe to her email newsletters, which she doesn't send email newsletters out like super often, they're really just like updates on patterns that are coming out soon, calls for testers, stuff like that. Um, but you can get this pattern down to $6 USD. Some other things that I, whoops, some other things that I want to note about my experience knitting this pattern, since I did use a variegated yarn, I did alternate skeins when I knit this with helical knitting. There was a question that came up about how you helically knit over the raglan increases, and I'll be honest, like, I could not find any tutorials or any, like, tips and tricks on how to do this. So what I did was on one of the rounds that was a knit round, so a round that you are not increasing, I just slipped all of those stitches to get past the raglan increases, and when I came around again, you are technically knitting an increase round on top of another increase round, but it's fine. Like, I would not be able to look at my sweater today and tell you where I did that. I don't remember which raglan increase it was, I don't remember how far down it was, and it's not noticeable at all. So, that would be my recommendation. Um, I mentioned earlier, I was not a fan of many of the construction techniques used, so I did a different cast on, I did a different raglan increase, um because I liked the alternatives better um, and I knew that I would be able to get a sweater that turned out the way that I wanted it to with these different construction techniques. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, that was the Cozy Classic Raglan. So I totally forgot to mention. So 
I said the yarn estimates, but then the yarn used slash leftover, I ended up using 1,014 yards of DK and 1,017 yards of mohair. So I had a full like one skein of each leftover. So the yardage estimates in the pattern um, are you can see are like more than what you'll actually need and many designers do increase the yardage estimates to account for swatching and potential mistakes um but something that you should know okay let's talk about the lento for the lento i knit size four which corresponds to a 48 inch circumference the pattern recommends 912 yards of fingering weight and 950 yards of lace weight I had three skeins of fingering and three skeins of surrey for six skeins total purchased. I ended up using 852 yards of fingering and 800 yards of surrey alpaca, which means I had about 90% of that third fingering weight skein left over and about half a skein of surrey left over. I really wanted to see if I could do this with just two skeins of fingering, but I lengthened the sleeves on this, and so I think if I had not done that, um, I probably would have gotten away with two skeins of fingering, but I prefer my sleeves to be longer, so that's where we ended up with that. The recommended gauge for this is 15 stitches on 6 millimeter needles. I hit mine 14 stitches on 6.5 millimeter needles, and I went with it. So I used a 6.5 millimeter for the body and a 4.5 millimeter for this ribbing, and then I used a 6 millimeter for this ribbing. I went all over the place with the ribbing on this. Um, I was trying to, my goal, especially for the body ribbing, was to not have it cinch in at the bottom. So the body ribbing I actually did in 6.5 millimeter needles, so I just used the same needle from the body for the ribbing. I do wish that I had either gone down to a 6 to because it just kind of looks like you can tell that it's there it kind of looks a little bit big so I wish I had gone down to a 6 because I think it looks really good on the sleeves or if I had done like twisted rib on the bottom it also would have brought that in just like slightly but in general like the sweater does just like go down it doesn't cinch in at the bottom which is what I wanted and I really like that. Okay, so the final garment, the recommended, um, the, the schematic shows 48 inches for the size 4. I ended up exactly with 48 inches in my finished object for 8 inches of positive ease, so I was really, really happy about that. I basically never hit it, like, right on the mark, so that was great. I knit this in 20 days, so just under three weeks. This was a little bit faster than the Cozy Classic Raglan. Um, I actually thought it would take me less time because it's such a large gauge on such large needles. Um, so it did take me a little bit longer than I thought it would, but like three weeks, 20 days is very fast. The cost of this is $6.50 euros. And my note, my only note on this is that the Surrey Alpaca was a great choice. I, I'm obsessed with this sweater. It's so cozy comfy and it's all because of the Surrey. I love it. So, okay, lastly, the Semper sweater. I knit size G, which is the seventh size in the pattern, corresponding to a 45.3 inch bust. The pattern recommends 1365 yards of fingering, 1476 yards of mohair, so I had five skeins of fingering and four skeins of mohair for nine skeins total. And I ended up using uh, 1052 yards of fingering, that was like 2.6 skeins, 1153 yards of mohair, about 3.6 skeins. So I ended up with almost two and a half skeins of fingering weight left over and half of a mohair skein left over. This sweater took way less yarn than I thought it would. Um, the recommended gauge versus the knit gauge. So recommended 21 stitches on 4.5 millimeter needles. I ended up with 22 stitches on 4.5 millimeter needles and I went with that. So I used the 4.5 millimeter for the body and a 3.75 millimeter for ribbing. 
the pattern size so 45.3 inches with two to four inches of positive ease was what was recommended my finished object ended up at 44 inches circumference for four inches of positive ease so I was a little bit smaller than the size that I made but I hit that recommended ease goal which is what I was hoping for and I was happy with the outcome of that sweater this pattern took me 35 days to make, which is about five weeks. So I know that seems like way longer than the other two, but I was dealing with a lot of elbow pain issues while I was knitting this. So that really inflated the time that it took for me to knit this. I think if I wasn't dealing with that, it would have been way closer to the three weeks that the other two took me. Um, the price of this pattern is 450 Great British Pounds and some of the notes. So I really liked the compound yoke like raglan increases. I mentioned this before. It just allows a really nice yoke depth for each of the sizes and it doesn't give you an extremely long yoke depth for the larger sizes. The only mod um, well, I made two mods. I did a split hem on the bottom, which I just think was kind of fun and was like really just like an aesthetic thing. And then I did knit a little bit extra length on the sleeves, although I am going to go back at some point and add more length on the sleeves. I just have longer arms in general and uh, need more length there. So that'll help to use up some of the more <laughs> some more of the yarn that I bought. So I'm happy with that. There were some questions about like yoke depth comparison. Um, I did not measure the yoke depth of each of these, but I did want to point out, and I've mentioned it before, so the Cozy Classic Raglan does have a yoke, yoke depth modification where you can knit it longer, which I thought was interesting. And the Semper sweater has the compound raglan to help make the yoke depth what it really needs to be for each of the sizes. So that's something that I would keep in mind if yoke depth is something that you are sensitive to. Lastly, um, somebody asked which one is more intuitive and I thought this was a really interesting question because I think if you've knit raglan sweaters before and you like generally know how to knit a raglan sweater like all of these patterns can be intuitive. For me though, I found the Lento to be the most intuitive. I think the fact that it did not have all the extra explanations and just like fluff, I guess fluff is the wrong word. If you like really need all of the explanations from the Cozy Classic Raglan and the Semper, it's not fluff. But when you don't need it, it kind of is fluff. But the Lento didn't have anything extra in it. It gives you stitch counts, it tells you when to knit and when to stop, it gives you, um, you know, measurements to knit to, and then you just go. And so if you've knit a raglan before, it is very intuitive and you can know what to do. Okay, so one of the questions that came up, this actually came up in the drop shoulder video, was what effect does yarn choice have on the finished object? Now, all of these raglan sweaters that I knit recommend a strand of fingering and a strand of lace weight yarn. So there isn't much difference in what's recommended, and there also wasn't much difference in what I chose to knit. I knit one strand of fingering and one strand of mohair for the Cozy Classic Raglan and the Semper, and then I knit one strand of fingering and one strand of Surrey for this, for this Lento sweater. Um, to be honest, I love my Lento the best. The Surrey was like the best option. It is soft. It's not itchy at all. It just gives that like cozy and like comfortable vibe that is something that like I'm always going for. I feel like I can wear this like to work and still be work appropriate. I can wear this at home when it's cold and I just want to be bundled up and like laying in bed and knitting or on the couch watching TV. Like it's very versatile and I love that. Of course, which is the best always comes down to personal preference, um, but the yarn choice can definitely impact the final outcome of your sweater. Okay, we're getting close to the end, and one of these last questions is, which is your favorite and why? I feel like I kind of just answered this, but to give you a little bit more context, I have also been keeping track of how often I wear each of these sweaters, and so I wanted to talk you through this. So the Cozy Classic Raglan 
I finished first, I finished this in January. So in January, I wore this four times. In February, I wore this two times. In March, I did not wear this at all. And in April so far, I have not worn this at all um, for a total of six times that it's been worn. My biggest thing with the Cozy Classic Raglan is I don't like how wide the neckband is. I have tried to sew in a strand of elastic to bring it in a little bit more, um, but I think I need to go back and revisit that and see if there's a better method that I can use to put that elastic in to really bring in the neckline. Um, when I wear it, the neckline comes out really far, and so if I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath, which I really like to do, to help stop just the general itch with the mohair you can see the t-shirt popping through the neckline and I don't like that it's like not a cute look at all I also want to redo the hem on the cozy classic raglan and make it a split hem um, that's kind of like secondary like I would still wear that without the hem modification if the neckline was better so that's what's going on with the cozy classic raglan Okay, let's talk about the Lento. I finished this in February, and I wore this seven times in February. In March, I wore it five times, and in April, I've worn it one time so far, uh, plus today, so two times, for a total of 14 times that I've worn this since finishing it in February. Um, I don't need to go back and make any modifications on this. Um, it's perfect. And lastly, the Semper sweater. So I finished this towards the end of March, so I haven't had as much time to wear it, but in March I wore it three times, and in April I've worn it once so far for a total of four times. Um, again, but it's only been finished for two weeks, so that's really like almost more comparison-wise, like percentage-wise, than the Cozy Classic Raglan. I mean, not almost, like it is. It is. It is more <laughs> uh, percentage-wise compared to the Cozy Classic Raglan. So... In terms of which is my favorite and why, and why finished object-wise, it's the Lento, hands down. I love the yarn, I love the fabric, I love the color, it is casual, it is comfortable, which are two of my favorite things that I mentioned, and it just feels like a soft sweatshirt. Again, I can wear this to work and be totally work appropriate, I can wear this at home and be totally comfortable and casual, and it's perfect, and I love it, and this one is my favorite. Now, in terms of the knitting experience, and if I'm going off of which pattern I liked the best, I will say the pattern that I liked the best is the Sember sweater. This is the one that I would recommend for a beginner knitter, 100%. Um, I think the information that you get in it is perfect. I like that it has both the written instructions and the video links. I think the additional yarn guide is just like fantastic. And the price like really can't be beat. It's 650 Great British Pounds, um, which is I think, well the Lento is pretty inexpensive. Um, but for the amount of work and effort and information that you get, you can't beat that price. I also prefer the techniques in this pattern over the techniques in the Cozy Classic Raglan. So again, that's a personal preference, but that's something that's big for me. And in general, I like the overall look of this pattern. I like that the neckline is closer, uh, a closer fit, and it's not wide like the Cozy Classic Raglan. I like the crisp lines of the Raglan increases, um, and I actually like the amount of positive ease. This was something that um, I was unsure about. I wasn't sure if I was going to be happy with something with only two to four inches of positive ease. I really thought like I was the person that needed like 10 inches of positive ease to be happy, but like I'm not anymore. Maybe I used to be, but I'm not anymore. I'm totally happy with that four inches of positive ease. I think it looks like really slim and it looks really nice. So yeah, the last question is like what else have you learned? And I've mentioned this a few times, but this whole process that started all the way back in September 
has really been super eye-opening for me. I have learned so much about my personal preferences. I have learned so much about sweater construction, both drop shoulders and raglan increases. I've learned about the time it takes to knit a sweater. Something I will say is that raglan um, sweaters knit up way faster than drop shoulder sweaters. Um, I would say at least by a good week, if not more. Um, and that's just the nature of the sweater. like you're you get it on the needles and then you just knit for a drop shoulder you are knitting it kind of in panels you have to attach a lot of pieces you have to pick up a lot of stitches which like is not a bad thing if you want that type of construction but if you're looking for something quick I would recommend a raglan if you're looking for something like very beginner I would recommend a raglan um, for very very beginners I may also recommend a round yoke sweater though I haven't knit very many round yoke sweaters myself the other thing I have to say is I'm just like honestly kind of happy that I stuck with this and I knit all of the sweaters and now I'm done with it. Um, as I was knitting the last sweater, the Semper sweater, I was like really getting tired of just plain stockinette knitting. Um, and I think that happens just in knitting like multiple raglans in a row. Like I said, it's very easy knitting. Um, there's nothing like really kind of exciting or... Um, stimulating for your brain if you're looking for something like that. In a drop shoulder, at least you get all of those different like panels that you're knitting, all these pieces that you kind of have to put together. So that was always really exciting. Um, but after I finished the Semper Sweater, Semper Sweater, I immediately cast on the Ranunculus. And so like that lace work yoke was the perfect palette cleanser that I needed. Um, it was something interesting and exciting and different. Um, and it was so great to do that after just knitting stockinette in the round <laughs> for months and months and months. So, but I mentioned this before. I mean, I think if you are someone who's like really interested in doing something similar um the best way to start i would say is to like get a knitting journal or get a spreadsheet just use like microsoft uh google sheets just use google sheets and start tracking like your measurements what is what the measurements of the pattern are for the size that you're making and what the final measurements are for the garment that you ended up with. Do that also for gauge and just start keeping track of these things because I think it's really interesting to see if there are any trends in how you are knitting your garments compared to what's being recommended in the pattern. You'll also start to see these differences between designers. Like I mentioned before, like towards the beginning of this video, you'll see similar gauges that are recommended in patterns with different needle sizes. And so you'll be able to see like, oh, this designer is probably a looser knitter. This designer is probably a tighter knitter. And then you can figure out, okay, well, where am I? And how, like, when I swatch for this, do I know right away that I'm going to need to change my needle size either up or down to try to meet this gauge or do I want even do I want to even not try to meet gauge do I want to go off the gauge that I knit up and just do the math to make sure the sweater fits the length <laughs> length and width of the measurements that I want it to be so it's a lot of stuff to think about and I would just encourage you to start writing everything down and keeping track of it because it's really interesting information to know about. So that's it guys. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about or something that you want to know about any of these patterns, how they compare, that I did not mention in the video, please please leave a comment down below um, and let's talk about it. Another thing that I would love to see in the comments down below is if you have any like 
classic basic raglan sweater patterns that I did not talk about today. I ended up choosing, um, well originally I ended up choosing the Cozy Classic Raglan, the No Frills sweater, and the Semper sweater because I felt like they were three of the beginner patterns that very very commonly get recommended to people as like a good first sweater. Um, the Lento wasn't really part of that, again like I said that was just something that got added in after the fact. Um, but if there are any other raglan patterns that you know of that get rec recommended frequently to newer knitters, I'd love to know about them and maybe even try them out myself. Don't forget about the jewelry sale by Ana Luisa that's going on right now. Again, it's a buy one, get one 40% off sale, and you can click the link at the top of the description box down below to participate in that sale. That is going on through April 18th, and if you miss the sale anytime after April 18th, you can use the code KNITCALIFORNIA20 to get 20% off any purchases. Don't forget to subscribe and press that like button. Subscribing and liking really helps tell YouTube that you're interested in my videos, and it helps recommend my videos to more people to help grow my channel. I hope you have a great rest of your day, I hope you get some knitting or crochet in, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!